All right, I've had a lot of people asking what kind of motors I've got on the KR33 uh, mini CNC machine. And I wanted to do a video to kind of highlight the motor. Um, I, this is my first uh, adventure with a true servo motor. And uh, someone on the YouTube channel had actually recommended that I check these out. They hadn't used them themselves. But uh, I started looking into it and uh, was quite intrigued by it. And it looked like a very good uh, solution and a very good uh, price point to get into uh, servo motors. So I gave them a call and uh, ended up deciding to go ahead and purchase one and try it and was extremely impressed with uh, what the motor is capable of. Um, so what I ended up getting is uh, it's a true uh, digital servo and this is a very small little package but don't let that fool you. Um, this is actually a NEMA 23 frame. Um, much like some of the hybrid solutions I've looked at in the past, this one actually has the controller built into it. So it's got the uh, controller, it's got the encoder for it, so it can keep up with its steps uh, because this is a true closed loop uh, solution. You can see the wiring connectors right here. Uh, that's for power and for the signal. And uh, it's just a real clean little package. I want to go over some of the, the reasons that I went with this. And uh, one is speed. They're extremely fast. I was able to get the the table front to back on the CNC machine to basically dial it in and just stop tuning it at 500 inches a minute. And when you only have nine inches of travel, that's pretty fast. So if you've seen the cut videos, that doesn't really do it justice because I have to worry about a bit going through the material. Um, the machine can move extremely fast and, and this very small but very powerful motor um, moves it with a lot of authority. So how is this different from a stepper motor? So a stepper motor, um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that stepper motors literally step around 360 degrees. So you may remember this. This is one of the first motors that I ever put uh, on the large CNC machine that I had. And, <clears throat> excuse me, what, uh, this is only 125 ounces of torque. And you can probably hear this. What that is, is that's the sound of those steps. So if you grab the, the shaft of the motor and move it, you can feel it. You can feel the resistance. You can feel it kind of chopping. Um, those are the poles that kind of push uh, the, the motor around to step it around 360 degrees. So for comparison's sake, you probably don't hear much. Um, you probably hear my fingers more than you hear the motor. So this is, this is a DC servo. It's extremely smooth. There's no resistance there. Um, and, and that shows in the motor. So Technic, um, I was not familiar with them. They've been around since 86. Um, this particular motor has a 90 day money back guarantee. So if you get it and you're not happy with it, um, they have a very generous return policy. Um, though I think you'd be quite pleased once you got it dialed in. Um, these have a three year warranty. They are assembled in the US. It's a very compact little package here. Got a nice heat sink built into the back of it. Um, you see this little plug right here. Um, this does a couple of things. So when you take that out, it's probably hard to see, but there's a micro USB connection in there. And there's also some status LEDs. And so this translucent little plug, when you're done programming it or done tuning the servo, you can actually close that back up and you'll still be able to see the status of the servo, whether it's got an error or it's uh, in operational status, it'll be flashing green. Um, so that's a, that's a neat feature. So let me bring you to the bench and we'll talk a little bit more about it in detail. And uh, you've already seen what it can do on the, on the CNC machine, but uh, I wanna tell you a little bit more about it. All right, so I brought you a little closer so you can kind of see it in better detail. And um, again, um, nice extruded aluminum body. Uh, there's your standard NEMA 23 frame. This one happens to be in a quarter inch shaft. Um, they do offer uh, other sizes. I can't honestly remember what the other size was, but for all of my machines, the quarter inch was perfect because that's what all my THK actuators, um, the, uh, the couplers that I use, um, they, were, they were ready to accept a quarter inch shaft. So it was good that they had a quarter inch version of this, um, even though, again, they do make it in a larger shaft size. So just for comparison's sake, since this one does have the controller built into it, here's, here's a standard 125 ounce stepper motor. And you can see that uh, this is only about an inch and a quarter longer than that. Um, 
it's really light for the size that it is. I think this stepper motor is actually heavier, um, largely because of the coils on the outside. But uh, again, here's, uh, here's the signal cable. And they've got really nice cables that uh, come with them. They're not too expensive. And so you plug your signal in here, you plug your power in there. And this can run on, um, I'm running them, them on 48 volts uh, DC, and I think they can go higher than that. Um, all the way to 72, I believe, or 75. But I think 48 is probably the minimum that you'd want to run them on, um, at least for a CNC machine. You can see the heat sink that's built into it. And here's the plug again with the uh, status LEDs on the inside. All right, so the motor, uh, since this is a DC servo motor, uh, servo also meaning it's closed loop. So not only does it move when you tell it to move, but it can keep up with where it is. Uh, and, and as far as its revolutions and whatnot, and the encoder in this um, is actually 12,800 counts. Um, and you can actually software set that uh, lower if need be. Uh, the, the digital signal processing that goes on in this motor, um, when, I, when I really started looking at the first one that I bought and started going through the tuning process, um, it was quite uh, eye-opening to see the level of detail that the, the setup software can look and see what this motor's doing to, you know, to the millisecond, to the nanosecond. Um, it's extremely detailed. Um, it, when I set it up the first time, it was, it was, it was, um, it was an involved process. Uh, before I bought the second two motors, they had come out with a firmware update that made tuning these an absolute dream. Um, and, and when you tune a, this was new to me, I, I was not aware of this, but when you tune a servo motor, it needs to be installed on the machine that it's going to be running on. And the reason is, is it needs to feel the resistance of the machine because the software is so intelligent and so smart that as it moves the axis back and forth, and, and this one was originally set up on my, my table, and so when it's moving that, that half inch piece of 12 by 12 mix six plate front to back, you know, it has to, it has to give it enough oomph to get it going. It has to be able to stop it in the, in a right uh, range, um, you know, in a right specification as far as precision. And so it needs to feel that resistance so it knows how hard it can drive back and forth. And you can sit there and watch this. The software actually has an oscilloscope built into it and you can watch what the motor's doing. You can see, you can see it try to settle in when it comes to a stop and when it picks up speed. Um, it's quite interesting to, uh, to see that. Um, and the diagnostics really help you dial this thing in quickly. I was able to set up the, the remaining two axes on my machine very quickly. So an, another big difference, I mentioned the steps on a, on a stepper motor. Um, and the chopping, chopping that you hear of sometimes, if you've heard my large machine, um, when I had my old stepper motors on it, it's, it's a very pronounced sound that the stepper motors inject into the machine because it's, it's, almost, it's a vibration, but it's caused by the motors because they're pulsing. And so obviously with this motor, you don't have any of that. It's a true just DC uh, motor, so there is no resonance added to the machine. Um, on my mini CNC machine, you don't hear this, the motors at all. You hear the ball screws and you hear the resonance in the, the aluminum because it is all aluminum, obviously. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, that sound just carries through it as the ball screws are moving, but it's not, uh, it's not because of the motors. So if you've seen my machines, you know that I don't really have a, a hard stop per se uh, as far as max travel, min travel. And what that means is, you know, how far back can the motor go or how far forward can the axis go. Um, what I typically have done in the past is I have a, I use a proximity sensor and I let that be a, a home sensor. The Technic uh, ClearPath motor has a, has a very interesting feature, a very nice feature. Um, and that is, if you have a linear actuator like the ones that I have used on my mini CNC machine, obviously it has a hard stop min and a hard stop max. It can only go so far. Hard stop feature or the, the homing feature of the motor, and you, once you set it up, the motor will retract to whatever the home position is. Um, and when it hits the hard stop, either the min or the max, however you've got it set up, it can sense that and trigger your system to say, okay, I'm at home. So home would be like a zero position for the CNC machine. So without having, having to add any other sensors or any other switches or any other wiring or power supplies, which if you've seen my rat's nest of, power, of cables on my mini CNC, 
Um, that's my doing because I'm still using proximity sensors. But this has a, a very nice feature uh, to allow you to get, get rid of at least some of those cables or an extra power supply. The actuators that I'm using on my machine, the bumpers, um, they're somewhat worn since they're not new actuators. And so just for repeatability, uh, because I knew those bumpers are somewhat squishy, I wanted the repeatability. So I basically took that responsibility away from the motor and put it on a sensor. The motor is perfectly capable of handling it. I just don't have new actuators. So um, I just had to find a workaround. So that's what I did. But the fact that these have the ability that if you put hard stops or hard bumpers on your machine, you don't even need the home switches. So if you saw the 3D cutting job that I did recently, and I'll put a link below uh, in case you haven't seen that particular video, I had my three axis mini CNC machine running, and it was the first time I'd cut a 3D contour part. Was it a very big part? It was only about three inches in diameter and maybe a half inch deep um, using a quarter inch end mill. And that job, uh, I was only taking, let me back up, I was only taking 10 thousandths of a step over every time it was making a, a linear pass. And when it, when it finally got done, it had been running for 49 minutes. And the motors on the, on the machine, I expected them to be on fire. And only the Z-axis was just a tiny bit warm. The other two motors were literally room temperature. Um, and I was very surprised because normally when I run stepper motors, they get quite hot, uh, especially with, a, I, don't, I don't think I've ever run a stepper job that long. Um, but even some of the smaller jobs that I've run, the stepper motors get extremely hot. So I was very impressed to see uh, how cool these motors run. All right, so here's the THKKR33 mini CNC machine that I've put together. And I've outfitted it with three of the ClearPath NEMA 23 size servo motors. And for this machine, um, I'm going to put it back together here. I still have, I still have my, my motor off. And you can see over here, here's the cables. You can see the quality of the cable, the quality of the boot. It's got the uh, lock tab on it. And you see how clean it allows you to put the machine together. Now, granted, my wiring can probably be a little bit better. Um, you see some other things, you know, my, my home sensors that I had to add. I've got a brake cable on the top for uh, assisting the servo, not to have to hold this load up all the time. And, um, but it's a pretty clean installation. You know, they're, they're easy to tuck away. And, uh, especially up here. I mean, how clean is that? It comes straight down the back and, uh, and routes very easily. All right, for those of you that haven't seen this machine run, obviously I'm gonna put some links down below that show some of the cutting that I've done with it so far, and I'm just really getting started with it. So uh, I'm excited to continue to use it. And uh, I've, I've never had as much confidence uh, in the machine that I put together as I do in this one right now. I'm gonna go ahead and put the Technic motor back on it uh, for the X axis left or right and we'll go ahead and crank it up and I'll run it through its warm-up program and you can listen to it. You can see how quiet it is um, because you won't hear the motors as much as you're gonna hear the machine just moving. Uh, the ball screws, uh, the bearings that are in it, it's quite, it's quite something to see, especially the rapid. So let me go ahead and button it back up and then you can see what these can do. All right, so I just cranked up the machine. I've got my Mach 3 up and running on this uh, not too powerful PC. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it to the, roughly the center of the table. You'll be able to hear that. So I'm going to issue a G28 because that's what I set it up as. If it wants to cooperate here. So that basically is kind of like a, a job setup position that I programmed into it. So let me uh, jog it off of the Z here. All right, so now I'm gonna tell it, I wanna reference all home. And what this is basically doing is this is using the proximity sensors. It's gonna basically take the machine to its zero point on each axis. So here we go. So first it's gonna be the Z going very slowly. This is going 20% of max speed. Um, again, the X, which is left to right, the Y, which is the table front to back, those are rapiding at 500 inches a minute. Because the travel on the Z is only four inches total, um, I actually had to dial it back. The motor can sling that uh, weight around all day long, but four inches is a very short run. So um, I actually had to throttle that one back. So I'm gonna go open up um, just my warm-up routine file. 
and that way you'll be able to kind of see the motor or the see the motors do what they do. So here we go. It's just going to go through a bunch of movements for each axis. I'll probably do a little bit of talking because it gets somewhat repetitive, but this is a good way to kind of warm the machine up, make sure it's got grease on everything, and uh, get it ready to actually do a job. So here we go. So if you pay attention to the movements, it kind of has a ramp up, it has a, uh, and a ramp down at the end of the travel. Now, the noise that you're hearing, that's the ball screw. I'm not sure what this uh, actuator's previous life was, how much it's been used. It feels very tight to me, um, but because it's hanging between these two beams on the bottom, it does create a little bit of noise, but that's not the motor. So to, in contrast, um, very similar length actuator that I'm using for the X, and you hear how quiet that is. Anyone that's used uh, stepper motors, um, you're not used to that level of sound. So it's going to jog back and forth here. Now the Z, now the Z is going to do its thing. Uh, again, we had to throttle that one back because it can move way faster than that. But how how bad do you really want to drive your bit into your part or the table? Um, and I won't say if I've done that or not yet. Um, I'll keep that secret to myself. Once it goes through jogging the Z up and down, it's going to do some more rapid moves, kind of in a, a prismatic pattern, um, just jogging all the axes again. A few more iterations of this and it'll start that process. But again, listen. So this is the last little routine it's gonna go through and then it'll be done. When I first ran that 3D toolpath, and I apologize, I didn't bring the part uh, down with me. Again, that video will be in the description below, as well as a ton of other information. I've got links to the, the information on the motors. I've got links to uh, how this came about itself, as far as a CNC machine. It's got some custom brackets that I designed and had a, a CNC shop produce. Um, I've had some other viewers get in on that so they can build their own. Uh, I actually have another viewer that's already going to be using the clear path motors. Also, if you saw the video where I was doing the 3D cut job, um, it was kind of shaky there at the beginning, not the machine, but me. Uh, it ended up doing a plunge cut into some maple and was taking a full width of cut. And uh, it was a little exciting to say the least, but it kind of dawned on me that this is a great way to test the machine and see what it, what it can do. Um, I did have to power it back some because of the bit. I was using a, a, a quarter inch bit. It was loading up. Um, I didn't want to snap it. I didn't want to tear something up. So I, I backed off the speed, but the motors never stopped. Again, we ran them for nearly 50 minutes, 49 minutes almost to the, to the second, and they never stopped. Um, and it was able to produce a fantastic part. I'll try to see if I can put some high res shots of the finish on that wood. Um, it's, it's maple that had a little bit of tear out, but the finish was like smooth as glass. You couldn't even feel the ripples in the tool path. Um, There's no sanding required. It was absolutely fantastic, especially for it to be my first time. I could have done a better job of tool pathing it, but the machine just took it in stride. So was very pleased with that. So I'm excited to do a lot of 3D work with this machine. Um, I've never really needed the large uh, footprint of, the of my larger machine. Um, and I think I'm going to concentrate on the smaller ones. And I'm very excited to have the Technic motors on board because once they're on there and I've, I've got them set, I don't think I've got to fool with that anymore. It's more of just, let's, let's make stuff. I don't have to, to work on the machine. So very pleased with that. So if you have any specific questions um, that you can't find or you, wanna, you might want more information on my impressions or, or you know how's it going now or now that you've got some time on it, what do you think? hit me up. You can always hit me at questions at neo7cnc.com. Um, I'm very pleased with them. I'm glad I bought them. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to see what else we can cut with them. So. All right. So when I was putting the video together, looking through all the clips that I had shot, it was painfully apparent that I kind of left out some important details that I just kind of glanced over, got sidetracked, and I didn't come back to them. So um, I wanted to do kind of a, an addition to the video and explain 
two things that are very important if you're budgeting to build a machine, if you're looking for certain characteristics of a machine. Um, so the first is price. I kind of glanced over it, said it was kind of in between a hybrid solution and a standard stepper solution, which it is. But what does that actually mean? So uh, Technic has actually started selling these motors direct on their website. It's, it's a shopping cart experience that we're all used to, um, so it should be familiar. Um, they, the prices of the, the motors actually start at $254. Um, that does not include the power cable and the signal cable, but they're very attractively priced um, and the quality is fantastic. So um, to put that in perspective, so I went out and looked at your standard off the boat uh, stepper solution. So using my old machine as an example, I had 425 ounce steppers on it and I was running it with, I don't remember the amp ratings of the, of the controllers, but I went out and looked at what that would cost right now with a digital controller, a digital hybrid stepper controller or whatever they call them, um, which basically tries to smooth out the resonance or the chopping of the motor. It tries to kind of electronically control that a little bit. So the motor would run you right at $40 uh, with the site that I used for reference and then the controllers are $80. Uh, if you go to a standard controller, not a digital controller, um, that price goes down to $50. So baseline to get into a 425 ounce solution, um, you're looking at either $90 or $120. Now this, isn't, this is not a closed loop solution. There's no feedback or anything. It's just a motor and you just assume that it does what you tell it to. So to put that in perspective, the servo motors, their closed loop system, um, their power is much different from a stepper motor. I'll get into that here in a second. Um, and it's an all-in-one solution. So you feed it power, you tell it what signals coming out of whatever controller board you're using and you're done. So as you saw, it's a very clean setup. Um, so back to power. So with stepper motors, um, they have a torque curve and, and what that simply is, is if we have a graph, we have torque, we have speed, uh, the stepper motor starts off with its rated torque and then as the speed increases across the bottom, that torque actually drops. So it kind of drops off. It's not exponential, but it's, it's pretty severe. So what, what does that mean to, to you and me? So let me use like a camera slider. So you've got a, you've got a rig, it's a beam of some type, that, some type that's got a carriage that rides on it, much like a CNC machine. Um, let's say you've got a, a nice size camera on this that's got a little bit of weight to it. So as the stepper motor, I'll use the stepper motor first, as it comes up to speed, it's gonna ramp up and it's gonna try to keep pushing that motor at a certain speed down this, this uh, beam or this track or what have you. Um, if the momentum or the mass that it's trying to push, if that actually builds up a little speed to where it's trying to move faster than the stepper motor, that could cause the stepper motor to stall completely and completely ruin the shot. Or it could lose steps and you would lose position. So if you, try, if you were trying to do something that was repeatable and you were doing multiple shots with the same camera motion, it would now be off because the stepper had forgot where it was because it, it tried to do something that it was physically unable to do. Compare that to a closed loop servo motor is it's going to it's going to ramp up it's going to put it's going to push that carriage and it's going to continue to do so and it's always going to hit the right mark even if it gets a little bit behind because it has the smarts to know what it's what it was told and what it actually did and so it can make up for a, a difference between those two pieces of information so the torque curve for us the the technic servo motors is extremely flat so when you get it up to speed, it's going to maintain, and when you slow it down, it's, it's, there's no difference really to the low end speed and the high end speed. Whatever the servo speed is rated for as far as RPM, the torque curve is extremely flat. So you've got all that power available to you um, pretty much the entire time. So that's a huge difference, and it was worth revisiting. You know, to put it in perspective, the best I could get on my large CNC machine was 100 in, 160 inches a minute. Um, on the little CNC machine, I'm doing 500 inches a minute and I don't even know what the high side is because that's kind of where I decided to stop because I only have nine inches of travel in the X and the Y. So there really wasn't a reason. I don't want to, I don't want to be moving at a thousand inches a minute and, and hit, hit the end of the travel. So that, that would not go well. So I wanted to touch on those two things. So i um, sorry I had to add this in on, uh, add this on at the end. Um, but uh, I thought it was important to go back and touch on that because if you're trying to design a machine, be it a, a laser cutter or a CNC machine or a camera slider or anything that you can think of, 
you know, this, this is something that you have to consider. You have to make note of that and you have to, you have to be mindful of it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, thanks for letting me do this video for you. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. I'm trying to give you uh, good information to make a good decision, no matter what direction you go in. Um, and so you'll end up with a good product at the end. So uh, if you're not a subscriber, um, we'd love to have you. And uh, we've got some exciting stuff coming up uh, very soon. I'm actually going to start working on that right after I get this video out. So uh, anyway, we'll talk to you next time.